Bigger than that case. Give me some silence. Yeah, I was, I was looking forward to it and then I watched it. Hello, welcome to Bigger Than Capes. I'm Zach. I'm joined by Angela. It's there's another Valiant episode. Yes. Yeah, sorry, everybody. <laughs> I apologise in advance. I'm looking forward to it, though. How, how have you been in the last, I don't know, two weeks or some such, three weeks? Uh, a bit warm. Rather overly warm. Yeah, we're on now, about uh, what, heat wave part two, I think, yeah. in the UK. Yeah, this is the longer version, the longer yes. extended cuts. Not as painfully hot in one burst, but kind of painfully hot for a, for a longer period of time. Yeah, I don't know which I prefer, whether to be hotter, but for a shorter period. I think possibly that, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's not a question you often have to really think about, but is the dizzying heights of like 36 degrees for a day better or worse than 32 degrees for like a week <laughs> <laughs> this is the debate um i i think the false hope because you kind of adapt when it's a few days and then when it comes plummeting back down yeah also we're from manchester as well so we obviously just don't know how to dress when we leave it's like if we can see clouds, we think we should have coats and umbrellas. Yeah. But I we probably don't need to. <laughs> yeah, I, I was taking my coat to work the first day of this heat wave. Just in I, case. I, what if it yeah, rains? Yeah, just in case. Um, and now I'm at a point where it's like, if it rains today, I will gladly be outside, no coat, no shoes, no anything, just, just yeah, ready. Just, so. Just stood in the rain, the cool, cool, refreshing rain that's coming next week. Yeah. But it's, God. it comes with the novelty that you will see grown men who have gone to the two extremes. One being like shorts, flip flops, no shirt. And then the guys who will be like shorts, flip flops, long, long sleeve jumper, bucket hat. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, make a choice. It's either summer and you're okay with it or you're terrified that it's not really summer so you're still wearing a jumper yeah pick a side i make your choice guys i did see a guy yesterday though in a kind of um wild west undertaker kind of big brim oh nice which bold but not a bad show although it did my the first glance at him when i saw him in that and like a black t-shirt was like oh Am I getting measured up for my coffin now? Like, <laughs> the Grim Reaper appearing <laughs> in a minute. Go and get reaped. Um, I don't, <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> don't know how to come back from go and get reaped. So <laughs> no. I don't know what that means. You just end it there. Um, oh, dear. So I don't think we've got particularly any news on much this week. Um, no, I've not had the brain power to take in news <laughs> I, I liked the idea that we were going to come into this like with all the news gathered up but i, I just <laughs> i haven't done that no so my alternative was to just talk about valiant books that kind of fit what we're talking about today so today we're talking mostly about armor clads yep uh the vol first volume of which has just finished like a couple of weeks ago four weeks ago according to um my reviews <laughs> i mean i'm inclined to believe your reviews um yeah i think the trade is solicited for the first of november uh it's around then yeah it's it was either early november or late october so i will go with that um so we're, we're a little ahead of the curve on talking about what's to come or has already been yeah um but you know it's that's that's cool well we're we'll, we'll fill in the gaps i don't know we're ahead of the curve for once for once yeah um so armor clads kind of sits apart from the main valiant universe 
So I thought we could talk about some of the other books that have done that in the last, like, ten years now. Yeah. Um, There's only three that I'm like, these don't connect to the universe. Yeah. Well, can you guess what those three are? <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, God. I didn't know there was going to be a quiz. Neither <laughs> did I. I'm just living in the moment. <laughs> It's difficult because some of them, I mean, I suppose you could go with, uh, are we including crossovers in this? I wasn't. I was going with purely standalone. There is one crossover that is so detached from reality that I would allow it. But (laughs) but what could that be? (laughs) That's the one I was supposed to. Well, that would be the delinquents, which bears very little. That isn't even the one I was thinking of. That's not a goal. Which one were you thinking of? The the most unconnected of crossovers. Yeah. Dead Drop. Oh, Christ. You see, I try not to remember that exists (laughs) as a concept because Uh, it's so, so awful that, I mean, I read it and then I've basically, I, I own it. In yeah. some format, but I think I burned a copy. Anyway, um... everyone I know who's into Valiant has read Dead Drop and cannot account for why. No, it's got EXO in it. It's got yeah. um, Betamax. Betamax is in it. Yeah, it's got. I can't remember her name. The detective from Quantum and Woody is in it as well. Um, yeah. Is it Archer? Archer shows up, yep. Um, It's not a crossover because none of them spend any time together. It's more like a tag team kind of thing. Yeah, like a relay race narrative. Yes. Um, And it's awful. Yeah, I don't know anyone who likes it. The the bits I like are the fact that I see characters from Quantum and Woody in, in essentially a solo issue, but the overall product is completely detached from not just the valiant reality but just all. reality generally um, um yeah it's it's awful it's just, maybe we should do a dead drop episode you know i think we should let's yeah let's give the people what they want let's, let's do, yeah let's just the worst valiant book ever made i i'm willing to go out on a limb and say there is no previous dead drop content available on the internet i don't think anyone else has touched this <laughs> there might be a good reason for that but you know let's blaze a trail there yeah you know let's <laughs> let's prepare the world for the critical reappraisal of yeah. dead drop like when people like when pitchfork go back and go actually this album was a 10 and we thought we said it was a three at the time what an idiot we were now let's do that with dead drop let's it is the time is the time now to reevaluate Dead Drop? Yeah, give the people okay. the the thing they've never asked for. Yeah, it's you've got to I give just... the people what they don't want. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that well-known phrase everyone says. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh God! Now I'm just thinking of Dead Drop all the time. Um, so we were back to the three books that are unconnected to anything. Well, while you do that, I'm just going to be doodling dead drop with little hearts around it. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, God. I'm trying to think of so many of them do, even in little ways. Because different people... Are we- How are you classifying this? Is like no one else going to show up from anywhere else? Yeah, there are three books in Valiant's current canon, because... I can't even hack figure it out the nineties where they yeah, do I mean, not the ni- connect okay. at any point with the widespread universe. Okay, is Psylords one of them? Psylords is one of them. There we go. Because and again, not very good. Um, okay, so Psylords is one. All I can think of now is Dead Drop. I'm trying to remember all the <laughs> characters in Dead Drop. Jesus. Okay. Right, let's go through year by. I mean, kind of that bloodshot one that was terrible. Uh, <laughs> just now thinking of Rise Project Rising Spirit, bore no resemblance to anything useful. Um, 
even more disconnected than that, because that's at least bloodshot. That is at least... Oh, God. Oh, okay. So we're not looking at any of the big characters, none of no. their runs. And oh, go, go, go to the... Oh, what were they called? <sighs> See, the problem is, is I keep thinking of the 90s stuff, which doesn't help. You have reviewed one of them within the have last I? year. Yeah. Within the last year? Yeah. And it wasn't armor clads. It was not armor clads. Oh, God. I never reviewed cyborgs. Oh, God. You know when your brain goes? Of course. Yeah, my brain's always gone. Especially yeah, in this heat. I can brain. put you out of your misery if you want. Go on. So, Savage. Christ on a bike. Yes. How did um, I forget that? Because I did review that, yeah. And you've also written about it, Britannia. Oh, how could I have forgotten that? I feel really bad about my brain. I'm blaming the heat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, the heat's the, heat's the problem. I'm um, blaming the heat. The heat is definitely the problem. Yeah, Savage was good. Savage was good. Um, both volumes, I think, do very different things. Yes, they do. Um. A little bit like I've always felt like Dots of Mirage, each volume is just completely standalone from what's come before. <laughs> yeah, because what all, is continuity? All, yeah, all three modern Dots of Mirage books have been like, oh, so this is the only Dots of Mirage book. Like, no, there's uh, never, yeah, sure, whatever. Okay. Yeah, let's... no, 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 let's just tell the same story again. Let's just mention that. <laughs> just, yeah. You um, see, Savage for me, certainly the Savage that they did before the Savage that they've recently done. Man, that was a sentence. Uh, was it Fred Van Lente to begin with? Yeah, that. I don't think that's true. As soon as I've said that, no, I think it's that's not. A lie. No, who did that? Clayton Henry. He's an art man. He did the art on it. Um, the new one was the man from that emo band. <laughs> the man from that emo band. Is that his official name? You're killing me here, but you, you'll know exactly who I mean when I... When we eventually just Google it and find out. I'm, I'm trying, Angela. Okay, yeah. so the the original was B. Claymore. That's it, B. Claymore. See where I got Clayton Henry? There Clayton a... Henry and Louis LaRosa. That's why I got confused. The newer yeah. version... Uh, what am I doing? What is happening now? <laughs> It's Max Bemis and Nathan Stockman. Oh, of course it is. Yeah. Are either of um, them in an emo band? Yeah, it's um, Max Bemis. Is. Max Bemis was in Say Anything. Yeah. And Triona uh, Farrell did the colouring. <laughs> Just yes. like that up. Um, and the lettering was done by Hassan Oswain Allahu because he letters every other book that I've ever read. Um, only, only letter available. Only letter uh, available. For the Himaday shop, people. Um, yeah, because I think because the original Savage, going back to the original Savage, which was... B. Clay Moore. Thank you. I was going to call him Henry Clayton Moore, which is not right. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's a, no. I don't know. I always felt, because Savage kind of grew up on an island, which was essentially the far away, was always how I viewed it. Yeah, that they. So that was the tenuous connection for me. There was a tenuous connection that it, maybe it's a stretch, and it never that. really. I guess it does connect, and I guess we're kind of told more about that in volume two, right? Yeah. Um. So eventually, that does connect. I I was always similarly with Britannia. I was yeah. always waiting for some reference to the Visigoths and yeah. Eric, Eric, or Eric's dad, or Eric, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But I was always sure that Britannia was going to just, you know, tip the hat to be like, it's the same time period. So. Yeah. Or alternatively, even because it supposedly dealt with the supernatural, even just like little hints of stuff that crops up in Shadow Man. Yeah, a little bit of Dead Side, or maybe an Eternal Warrior, you know, like Walk On part. Or... I mean, Gilad is hanging about. We know he's around in that period. We know that he's, you know, probably slaughtering people in that period. Because yes. that was in his slaughtering phase. Yeah, his slaughtering phase. <laughs> Covered most of the Roman it. Empire, if memory serves. But there's yeah. a few characters that I expected 
all th- all three immortal brothers and yeah maybe the- not i mean we know armstrong did hang about in rome yeah and he did some drinking with various emperors indeed did yeah, yeah. but I don't know. It always surprised me that the brothers never get like an on-screen moment or on-panel moment, and yeah, neither does Arik, and neither do any any valiant character that would have been around. Um, and I always assumed that was more of a Peter Milligan disinterest rather than. Yeah, I think had and Britannia has two good volumes. <laughs> And then it has the Lost Eagles of Rome, or whatever it was called. <laughs> that was it. Like a test to see how much you'll put up with. Yeah, which was, I mean, it had such promise. But I think, yeah, had it been written by someone who was more valiant orientated in terms of the universe, because you can tell that, like, to pick to pick a recent example, Steve Fox, who is doing the current Archer and Armstrong, clearly he likes knows a Archer lot. And Armstrong. He likes Archer and Armstrong. <laughs> He knows about the Fred Van Lente run. He even, you know, he's read the A&A run. He's even clearly from some of the little references he's dropping in, is familiar with some of the even earlier stuff, like the 90s. Yeah. So you can tell that he has had a grounding in that, so he's putting little Easter eggs in. Um, for the people and, like us who need yeah, to get a life. Yeah, for the nerds. Um, <laughs> and thank him for it. But... It, it never felt like Peter Milligan was very interested in... He was just like, well, I'm writing a book about a Roman detective and it just happens to be published by Valium. I... Th- this is complete speculation. I could be wrong. But I, it always felt to me like Peter Milligan was brought in to write Shadow Man and, like, the deal was, like, if you write Shadow yeah. Man, we'll also publish your weird Roman Sherlock Holmes book. Yeah. And Valiant fans at the time, every Valiant fan I knew at the time was so rabid for Valiant that we all read Britannia. Yeah. We love Britannia. Uh, Britannia's yeah. really good. Britannia is a very decent book. Got nothing to do with Valiant. No, <laughs> it could have been published by literally anybody. Yeah, if it was an image book or a, I don't know, dark horse book. It feel, it. Yeah, it feel in a way it feels like a dark horse book. Yes. Yeah, very, um, it, it takes ages between volumes and yeah, it's, a bit, <laughs> it's exactly. a bit unclear who it's aimed at and it's and kind of dark volume, and grey. Yeah, and then the third volume's terrible. Um Yeah. So no, Britannia is so Savage was good, Britannia was partly good, Silords was not good. Silords was weird because it's one of those Valiant series that was announced and then five years later we got, I think. Yeah, because that was Fred Van Lente again. Who, basically the rest of his Valiant books, flawless. I Yeah, perfect. Um, Archer and Armstrong, Generation Zero, um, Ivar, all yeah. really, really good. I mean, only we like Generation Zero, but if you're out there and you like Generation Zero too... <laughs> you're not... You're not alone. <laughs> Say hi. We're we're on Twitter at, at bigger than capes and uh, yeah. Screw Is it. it this is the I'm going to do the plugs. Go you can, al- you can also find us at biggerthancapes.com where we're regularly talking too much about Valiant, and you can support us over on Coffee where we have a coffee page. I don't know. Um, if yeah. you if you like the rambling that we do, send us money and we'll buy coffee. Yeah, or, or, or comics or something. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, liquid. Yeah, <laughs> and we will also. Yeah, and if you want, you know, let us know. If you want us to do the dead drop episode, give us money. Alternatively, yeah, if you don't want us to do it, give us money. We'll accept bribes for whatever yeah. decision you want to make on that one. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's we, we, we'll launch Patreon, and that's what's on <laughs> it. Um, that is the first one. We we will do a Patreon purely of comics we're fairly sure we're not into, and that's all the content <laughs> is. It's just us sighing and yeah. complaining for an hour at peace. Yeah. Um legitimately would do that. I've got nothing better on at the minute. Um I I was so optimistic about Psylords and it kind Me of Me too. I just don't know what Psylords is about. Astronauts that go missing in space and nonsense ensues. It's just... 
And then and they wear different colour suits. They do. They're kind of cosmic Power Rangers, much like yes. Power Rangers in Space or Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. But oh. they, do, they do more murdering of each other than the Power Rangers have been known to do. True. True. But good to know that there is an audience for Radiant Black. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird dig at... <laughs> It's a reference. <laughs> Random direction. Um, I'm not even sure if that was a dig. That was just... <laughs> just it was just it a is. statement of fact. Um, likes the idea of Psylords. Um, bought all of it. Read all of yep. it. Yep. Don't know what I've gained from Psylords. Um, out of the three, Psylords is the one that I'm still struggling to figure out what the point it feels like Psylords happened because they'd said Psylords would happen and yeah and and it happened and it sure did <laughs> we're all it's all we can say <laughs> about that really it um armor clads on the other hand he's yeah. also set in space kind of so on another planet yeah another planet by the name of Zero. yes um which I don't think has been name dropped in any other Valiant comic, so I'm I'm kind of writing this off as a standalone. Concept. Yeah, I mean, the whole when it was first announced that we were going to get you know people in suits in space, essentially. Sound familiar to that? <laughs> I was automatically thinking, please don't let this be another silence. But also, um, EXO would have to me is kind of an obvious link because not just because he has a suit but because exo does go off and have he's he's been in the cosmic space a bit more than a lot of the others there's also huge huge gaps in his continuity yeah because he seemingly manages to be off world for like years at a time but you can't figure out when or how and like no narratively we're frequently told Arik did this for this amount of time, but there's no way of knowing how. Remember when he conquered a planet? Yeah, um, yeah, that was that was a thing. And that, but he was back for Harbinger Wars too, mysteriously. Yeah, and he only seemed to be. We were told prior to that he'd been gone for like ten years or something, or five years. Yeah, he'd been gone for a very long time. Yeah, but. There's no space for him to have done that. Years no. don't work that way. So, yeah, there was time for him to have ran into a planet and kick-started the armor clans. Yeah. But, but apparently not. Uh, would no. you like to give us a little synopsis intro of the armor clans? Yes. So the creative team behind them, there are some names on here that aren't really... The writers are J.J. O'Connor and Brian Buccioletto, um, neither of whom have done much prior Valiant work. In fact, nothing, as far as I can tell. I haven't looked them up and double-checked, but they're not names that you know as Valiant writers. Watch them having written, you know, something that I've reviewed. Um, the penciler is Manuel Garcia, at least for the first two issues. In the third issue... Um, he is um, assisting Miguel Sepulveda, who then takes over for the fourth and the fifth issue. The Inca remains Raul Fernandez throughout. The colorist is Rex Locus for the first three issues. And then Hi-Fi takes over for the fourth and fifth issues. The letterer, thank God, stays the same. And it's our old friend Dave Sharp who letters all the books that Hassan doesn't. Um and the cover artist is actually the same. So that's Bagus, and I only say this because I like his name, Bagus Hutomo, which is a name to conjure with. Um, so Armaclads is set on another planet. Ironically, the main characters that we're following are not Armaclads. Yeah, or at least this... not to begin with. No, to begin with, they are the Ironclads. And the Ironclads are basically... Um, so they are. We're following the Star Trek rule of aliens, which is they're aliens, but they look like human beings. Um, the armorclads are actually not native to the planet, um, nor are the people they are enslaved by, the Alphans. 
Um, they all look like human beings, and if you put an elf and, and an ironclad next to one another, you would be hard pressed to discover which was which. Um, but the ironclad sort of have little genetic quirks, which will become important later. And they're basically used for mining um, the stuff that basically runs all of elven civilization. Uh, they are watched over by the armor clads, who are basically bullies. They're big soldiers. Um, so the ironclad suits are designed for mining, so they have little drill bit attachments and all that jazz. Um, the armor clads uh, basically just have big guns. Um, and, you know, there they are, toiling away. And then one of this group of ironclads that we're following um, gets killed in an avoidable accident. Basically, the, the armor clads just let him die because... He's not worth it, you know, he's just a resource. And that sort of galvanises these ironclads to sort of start a revolution. So really, it's the story of their little revolu revolution, that is a word, um, against the armorclads and moving forward and, you know, taking over. They also have the legionnaires to battle with who are like the mercenary types with giant bugs. Um, that is very starship troopers. Um, when they appear in... The bugs are, at least. <laughs> yeah, the bugs are very Starship Troopers. Um, but, yeah, the Legionnaires are basically the local mercenaries who are trying to attack the Alphans. And, yeah, so it's this group and how they lead a revolution and other stuff happens, which I'm sure we will discuss in due course, but that's essentially it. Yeah, I think you've basically covered a large portion of this. Um should say now that you know there will be armor clad spoilers or yeah. armor clad spoilers perhaps <laughs> yeah it definitely has a starship troopers kind of vibe um in certain elements of it i think we also get a kind of warhammer 40k kind of thing going on with the mm. designs which it, i guess is just inevitable with like mech suits at this point yeah, I mean... And kind of armies you, of mech suits and... Yeah. The aesthetic is just so readily available that it's like a... Just a thing that's in, like, the public consciousness at this point. Yeah. Um, I also thought the genetic engineering or, like, genetic hints of the ironclads reminded me of... You're going to know the character names that I've forgotten. Uh, yeah. Original Guardians of the Galaxy with, like... Uh, okay. Um, so, like, Charlie, Martin, is it? Yeah, Charlie 27, um, who is from Jupiter, and then you've got Martin X, who's from Pluto. Yes, who yeah. are both genetically engineered to function in the different gravities, different temperatures. Different, like, Charlie 27 kind of is stockier and shorter because he's meant for super gravity. Because we don't yeah. know what, what a Jupiter is in the 60s. <laughs> No. 70s, no. 60s? I can't remember when that run was. Oh, God, I can't remember. I have read it, the original run. Yeah. I think it's, just, it's it could be the, the early tail 70s. end of the 60s, early 70s. Yeah. Then they kind of come back again in the early 90s. Yeah, and then they come back yet again in, in the, the 2000s. 2010s? 2010s, yeah. Oh well, they're they're around a little bit in the 2000s because we get like Abnett's Guardians, but they yeah, yeah. they I. I don't know if it's intentional or just coincidence, but yeah, they remind when the uh, ironclads were doing the whole <laughs> these alphans aren't you know built for our super gravity and whatnot because it hadn't been mentioned kind of until that scene I think or at least no, explicitly hadn't. and in that it kind of made me immediately think of like oh like like Charlie yeah like yeah <laughs> except that the ironclads are skinny weedy types generally yeah I think that's what's what makes it even more subtle is the fact that, yeah, in, in Guardians of the Galaxy, the people are, like, completely remade to suit their environment. And in this, it's just yeah. like, oh, yeah, these regular teenage kids. Yeah, they're just, they're just a whole bunch of teenagers. Um, I did always think this is completely unconnected, that Charlie, 27, does just look like Juggernaut without the helmet. Yeah, he does. He <laughs> absolutely does. I feel like that, that was his character design just like the juggernaut but just leave off the helmet. yeah just just drop the helmet and he'll just be kind of you know rugged dude and he'll just <laughs> yeah. kick stuff yeah. and yeah whatever um Best of the charlies yeah i i do quite like that original guardians run for how like 
part partly because of how badly it's aged i think is part of the appeal yeah yeah the the fact that it's based on so much science that was almost immediately out of so date. much debunking of the science yeah. has been and like you say not far off because we were beginning to explore the solar system yes there were probes yes. out there we were getting photographs scientists were kind of working it out and yeah within sort of 10 years it'd been completely debunked <laughs> there's an irony that all of that is what inspired guardians of the galaxy but the continuation of that basically disproved Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> but, you know, it's a thousand years in the future. There's still time for Jupiter to change how it works. Yeah, there is still time for Jupiter to be habitable in some way. Also Pluto, I guess. Yeah. Pluto is not even a planet now. God bless yeah. it. As soon as we figure out how to crystallise people, though, and give them temperature powers where one hand makes stuff yes. cold and one hand makes stuff warm... <laughs> Yeah. Problem solved. Um, so, so back to Armaclads. Back to Armaclads after that little. We, we, we can talk out of date Guardians of the Galaxy all day, but that's probably True. not why you're here. I mean, no. maybe that is why you're here. I don't know. I... Props to you if you are. If if you if you took one look at this episode and thought, I bet they're going to talk about the original Guardians of the Galaxy, <laughs> then you know, yeah, good call. You you know what we're about. Yeah. Um. So uh, kind of conceptually and aesthetically, I think there's stuff borrowed from different places. And I don't yes. I don't think this is the most original idea. It does have kind of YA, you know, Very teen much. sci-fi dystopian type kind of stuff. And it's not really dystopian. It's just a sucky mining, pla- mining planet rather than... Yeah. I mean, they get... That's it. It's, it's all to do with freedom and self-determination and being able to forge your destiny it, it's those yes. classic sort of tropes but boiled down to ya format which is but what i did like because at one point i did think we were gonna get a bit of a love story going on and thank god we didn't between yeah. the paris uh, paris uh, and layla yeah i thought oh god they'll make them you know like that but no they just respect each other as people which is refreshing it, it obviously um, helps that those characters are separated for like also, four out of five issues <laughs> but yeah so they're the, spoilers they're separated at the beginning of issue two and then they don't reunite till part way through issue five so yes yeah. it, 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 i mean there was still there was still time i guess there for them to you know run into each other's arms with their big metal suits on or whatever their big metal but, suits. Yeah, um, but they didn't and you know but throughout it's like Layla's motivation is to rescue Paris, but that's all their motivation. And also, it's like, no, we're going to change the world. You know, she gives exciting speeches and such. Yeah. So she becomes more of this heroic leader. And it's, just, it's coincidence that her friend is a boy who she's rescuing. Yes. It could be literally anyone. And, you know, she'd do the same for them. I have also realised, we also told that, like, he's 17 and she's, like, 14 or something, which is probably... There is that, yeah. (laughs) This is one of the nitpicks I have with this, is that these are meant to be teenagers. They do not particularly... They do not look like teenagers a lot of the time. They look young, don't get me wrong, they look young, but when it's revealed they're, like, 17, I'm like, whoa. Because I was thinking early 20s, kind of. And Basically, there's... One character, I want to say it is Jack. It is Jack. It looks like, yeah, 12. Yeah, and Jack is meant to be about 13, 12, 13. So, yeah, but everyone else looks like early 20s. And I know that's a hard distinction to make between, like, late teens, early 20s. But when you tell me someone's, like, 14, I'm like, "Mm, well, you've, you've drawn her to look. She looks older than 14. Older than 14. She doesn't look like a 14 year old. Um, no. And I get it's hard. I know it's difficult to like pick those lines. We talk often about how hard it is to draw children that look like children in yeah any comic. And yeah, I guess that's just another issue we have here. Layla's fourteen. Um, yeah. Paris is seventeen. Paris is seventeen. Jax is sixteen, and Pulo Jax- Pulo. It's 14. Pulo's 14. And you you see, to me, Jax is the younger one. I would have said Jack was the young one. I just have said that. <laughs> yeah, Jack Jack is quite cl- I could have sworn Jack was like 13, 14. But no, that's Hulo. Okay. 
Hulu, even. Who I don't even think we see that much or speaks that much. That's another problem that I have with this, is that there are we have an entire army of ironclads, and I get that it's difficult when you have multiple characters in a book and you have a short run of five issues for your arc. Yeah. But the only ones we actually really learn about to the depth of, you can call them well-rounded characters, Paris, mm-hmm. Layla, Jack to a certain extent gets a bit strange. The others kind of dip in and out. They have moments. There are some really lovely moments that uh, you think you could build character off here. Yeah. And then they just don't appear for three pages again. The, the I think this is this is not a good thing, but it, it is a good thing. Oh, this is complicated. Cole mm. is quite quickly defined because Cole is like the mechanic type who yeah. is in a wheelchair and therefore is immediately defined as being like, Cole isn't going out doing the missions to uh, mine for pure with the rest of them or fight bugs purely because Cole is in a wheelchair back at base being a mechanic, which I I feel like it's good to have that representation of here is a person of colour who's in a wheelchair who is not, you know, fitting the the mould of everyone else in this book. But it is also one of those it's like, are those also the only defining characteristics? Because that's a little bit, you know, pretty weak there to be like, I don't know. And obviously, you know, I don't think Cole's a bad character. I think we just don't get enough to flesh Cole out other than those little bits of knowledge. Yeah, I think that that is the problem is that I think these could be really good characters and really interesting characters if more time was actually given to fleshing them out beyond the basics sort of facts that we know about them. Yes. And obviously that's difficult to do. This is only a five yeah. issue book. It's hard to find the, the time to flesh out an army of teenagers. Yeah. I um, that, that would be one of my complaints with this is that I think this book, whilst I appreciate the revolution, you know, always yeah. who doesn't love a good revolution. Um, I think one of the strengths that no, one of the weaknesses is that if we had focused on Paris, Layla, Cole, Pulo, Pulo, I don't know, and Jack, and had five five protagonists, core group, I think that would have been okay. I don't know if they needed yeah. to do the like door to door rounding up new recruits for. Yeah. Also, that very much suggested this was this confused me because quite early on we're introduced to Sergeant Troy, who yes is like their supervising officer, and then when when name drops uh, Major Wren as another yeah higher up, but then when they're going door to door, is the idea that they're directly behind Legionnaires all the way who are like. Yeah, the Legion kicking ass, ass taking wiping names. them out. Yeah. So, uh, but they, it, yeah, it's like either the Legionnaires are walking in, killing the head officers, taking the pure, and getting out of there and leaving everyone else be, or yeah. I don't know. But then no one else working? decides to go rogue either. Everyone else is just like, uh oh, Legionnaires have killed a bunch of people. Well, I'm gonna get lunch. Uh, <laughs> 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 gonna eat my apple in my mess hall. Yeah, it's really, yeah, a test tube growing apples. Yeah. Uh, almost as good as the real thing. Mm. Um, yeah, it just feels a little bit odd that there's seemingly no upper management unless, yeah, the Legionnaires are one building ahead of them constantly. Just, just always there. would make sense, because we kind of see in the penultimate issue that the Legionnaires are doing the exact same thing the Ironclads are doing, just like 25 yeah. minutes faster. Yeah, um, and with more killing. Yeah, I do like, I do like that the original Legionnaire design we see they are essentially just Jowers, but like yeah. they're just full size Jowers who've got like bulletproof vests, and that's it. They they're just yeah. like the mat, the hoods cover their faces, and they've just got little glowing eyes, and it's like oh, I mean yeah, Jowers are kind of cool, I guess, but let's hey. make them mean and nasty and give them <laughs> bulletproof vests. Um, 
but yeah, Jawas in body armor is quite a simple but decent character design. Um, yeah, I would have been into seeing more more about the legionnaires and maybe something from their point of view kind of like in scouts honor where we see the highwaymen yeah. kind of from the inside a little bit um i don't know M- maybe that's my my complaint here it would have been five core characters team up with the legionnaires that's your revolution rather than yeah five characters plus the guys they round up plus the legionnaires to take on the alphas yeah. and the armor clads it feels like a very roundabout way to do the story that they do because it doesn't give anyone enough time no because and it's like that final bit is like you you start you start to have sort of some sort of sympathy for the alphans when their whole city gets you know wrecked by the legionnaires but at the same time, you could have told that in a different way because there is the whole there is a whole section sort of I can't remember is it in issue two or issue three it might be issue three where you've got some captured alphans and you've got the ironclads and you have like whole you have a whole scene where mm. they sort of come to an understanding between them and then it's like so what actually happens to those alphans they've taken um, prisoner. Where where do they go? Yeah, that's a good question. They kind yeah. of they're, they're stomping around with them for a little bit, and then they kind of just they just disappear. Disappear. I don't know. They get left behind in <laughs> somewhere. I don't know. Uh, in one of the bubbles, I guess. But yeah, but I bubble? think it would have been it would have been interesting to sort of have them continue. If you had five core characters, you could have you know a couple of alphans that they've captured, etc., and you know having them interact a bit more and then the whole bit where you know the city's being attacked would have a bit more impact because i think we're meant to have some sympathy for the alphans but the only guy it's like the governor is the only chap that we've sort of seen in any detail who hasn't been just a massive asshole um yes when he's talking to paris and sort of talking about you know in in the olden days, there were giant mech suits, and where have we heard that before? But he's the only one that sort of we get any sympathy for. The rest of them are just painted as assholes. And I think kind it would have been, yeah, it would have been interesting to kind of try and flesh them out a little bit more. If you're going to go to the point where, you know, we're meant to feel some sort of sympathy for them, there were little individuals along the way who we could have had sympathy for, but ultimately they, they just disappear. Yes, and I, I mean, this character's like Major Helix is going to execute uh, Paris at the end of, no, even at the end of it, during issue two. Two, yeah, beginning of two, yeah. I don't know what happens to him. <laughs> no, I assume he's one of the captured people. I can't remember who the two that they deal with who are captured are. I can't remember which uh, ones they are. I'm not sure they get named. They're captured by, like, Big Dude. Uh, no, they yeah. capture like Big Dude, and Big Dude doesn't really. He tries to beat up Jack and fails uh, yeah. because he's not got the weight advantage he thinks he has because of gravity and such. Yeah. And there is another kind of smaller dude with kind of light brown hair who's kind of a, also a dick at one point, but we don't yeah. know who he is either. Um, and we see Helix get involved in the Legionnaire attack, but then just stops disappears yeah. i i don't know he's just um it, which is weird and then when we get the governor and this annoyed me this Go annoyed on. me a lot governor doman yeah and um well we we can't settle on a spelling for that can we <laughs> you're assuming that there was some thought behind the spelling um we definitely have d o h m a n and we also have d o m a h n Yes, we do. Um, which, if you, if you see it in my review, spelt numerous ways, this is why. Um, so I'm not sure what that was about. It just felt like <laughs> uh, uncertainty in the editing or in the lettering. I don't know, but it, that's not, the kind of thing that always annoys me. So I'm like, yeah, it's not Dave Sharp's finest work. He's done better. 
I mean, I guess you write what you've been given, but <laughs> yeah, still. Um, but yeah, that I was interested in Doman as a character and why he thinks Big Gun gonna solve yeah. problems. Yeah, it's gonna bring <laughs> peace. Big Gun will bring peace. No, nothing brings peace like what appears to be a very large Gatling gun. Yeah. That's, I think we all know that. Yeah. That's, that's how it works. Um, if you can have a Gatling gun to solve your problems, you know, do. it's. I mean, I've tried, but, you know, it tends to get you arrested. It really, um, you remember that bit in the Jonah Hex film where he's got, like, mechanical Gatling guns mounted to his horse? Oh, yeah. You know, what's yeah. that about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, you could say that about Jonah Hex. <laughs> about the Jonah in Hex film. Entirety. I think I've got that on DVD somewhere. Uh, I do not have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was from my I must watch every comic book film phase, which. We've all been there. <laughs> I was wrong. I don't need to watch them all. Um, yeah, I think my, my main criticism here is the characters need a little bit more space and need. Yeah fewer characters i've I've made note uh, notes of kira sill and ada who yeah they appear are all named characters later on that don't really flesh out very much no i think kira gets a couple of lines at one point yeah she was suffering from pure pure poisoning in a field hospital that layla was also in leela layla i don't know layla Uh, they were in a hospital together for a bit. That's that is the level of detail we get on Kira. Um, yeah. Which sure, fine is is enough of a you know me, I know you. Let's let's go bring down civilization. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think a core group to be fleshed out, the legionnaires to have some attention. All these characters just have a little bit more time would have helped in this. Um, and don't get me wrong, I don't think this is bad. I think this is an enjoyable no. version of what it is, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah, I mean, I think the reason we are criticising it the way we are is because it isn't bad. It is it is good enough, but mm. you just see that it could be... Ba- you know, you can see that there is a hell of a lot of potential with it. Um, yes. It's done... It What it does, it does fine, and it is an enjoyable read, but... I think it does. It's not performing to the best. It's like you want it to do really well because you know it can be better because it's it's good at this level. But think about what it could do. It's like you know, it, it's like a Definitely. sprinter that could be <laughs> so much better if it you know instead of doing the one hundred meters, if it did the two hundred meters, it would be winning gold. It's a really bad analogy, but but I, I get where you're coming from. Yeah, I. I think that is one of the issues, is it, it, it could just be ever slightly better with very minimum changes. Um, I am curious to see what the next volume could bring. I think Space Revolution, kind of by accident, It's I don't think it's the intention. The intention is to save Paris. And yeah. I think by separating Paris out, we see more character growth for him. Yep. Purely because he's kind of with Governor Doman, and Doman's doing the whole, don't worry, I wanted to come to this horrible, horrible planet because I'm going to save the universe. How? Because you're <laughs> going to use my magic gun. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know if they're going to find the pieces of seven armors, and that's why we're trying to establish, like seven or eight named armor clad character ironclads turned armor clad characters so it's like we're the you're the guys you're the yeah seven dynasties created seven magic armors that could <laughs> save the world and you're all incidentally related to that and we're gonna armor ourselves up and save the universe um i don't know i'm curious i am curious i will carry on with this i'm just unsure one, when there will be more yeah. of this because Valiant do have a tendency to set things up and then never actually yeah. follow. 
and there um, has been nothing announced. And bear in mind, they are announcing stuff like the new EXO, I think, has been announced for March 2023. Yes, um, so, this, so would need, this would need to be pretty pretty soon for it to be like an immediate follow-up. Yes. Well, even, no, even then it would not be an immediate follow-up. Follow -up, no. Uh, but the fact they are announcing projects into 2023, they have made so far, as far as I'm aware, no mention of a follow-up when we're going to get armor clads so it's obviously not in the immediate six month future i mean we, we say that there is every chance that it's been four weeks and i'll get an email from valiant telling me that armor clads five armor clad six is here so it could be because one thing i don't think we have touched on is because it's divorced from the rest of the valiant universe Apart from the very end of issue five, where we throw in the Geomancer for reasons. Yeah, I, I mean, we haven't touched on that. I feel like we've talked for a while and not touched on... Not much. touched on <laughs> anything apart from Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, um, but because it's sort of standalone, as it were, apart from the very end, which probably confused the heck, it is more of a newbie-friendly stuff. It, mm. it, it, it is more... If you've never read a Valiant book, you can read this and you don't need to have be aware of the whole decades worth of history you don't need to have read dead drop which thank god for <laughs> that um it is, is one of those i do think that is a major strength that valiant needs to kind of expand on is the fact that to get new readers you can just make books that look cool that's yeah that's kind of fine you can they they can do more britannias or more silos or more savages or more dead drops um not more dead drops, no, for the love of God. <laughs> you can just pick a character or pick... This is the thing, I, I think, whereas we see Image throw everything at the wall constantly and just chance it, the same with Vol or Aftershock or whoever, that we see them constantly just drop books. And I, I think Valiant could afford to just publish some out there books that might not connect and just be like, well, you know... Yeah, we're a publisher as much as we're a shared universe. I think that's yeah. what, one of the problems Valiant suffers from at the moment feels like the fact that Marvel they're still chasing Marvel and DC with the idea of yeah. all books be connected, everything's in the same world, everything. Whereas it's, it's kind of okay to have a little book like this that just runs wild on a different planet we've never heard of and draws people in i think that's a good thing anytime people do books that you don't need you know a degree in yeah comic history to read or continuity is pretty good i i think that's one of the benefits here i didn't have any of those moments of trying to remember what was going on with EXO last time or what was... No. It, it's very much just... And, and don't be wrong, I think I, at the best of times, Valiant are far more accessible than Marvel or DC because oh, yeah. it's rare Valiant are going to drop something meaningless to you if you've never read it before, uh, read, read their books before, I think. Yeah. The nature of resting characters and then cycling them back in kind of creates a better dynamic for jumping on and you know new starting point new jumping on point new arc yeah all new jumping on point um and I, yeah i think you, you can enjoy armor clads without knowing anything about valiant and maybe the tama thing will change that maybe that was there to sow the seeds that if you've you know if, if you're new to valiant maybe the next thing you should check out is well i don't oh, know uh, no because tama shows up in several different things the valiant is where she's introduced i think which is yeah. seven years ago eight years ago it's a long while ago so now that you've read this if you want more tama the geomancer yeah. you can read the valiant where she becomes the geomancer and you can read uh, incursion eternal, yeah incursion eternal warrior all of, was two two all of that <laughs> nothing but hits until armor class <laughs> two comes out 
Yeah. And I, and I, I don't know, that's not a bad method. We haven't seen a lot of Tama. So giving no. people a, hey, maybe we won't do any more Amaclads tomorrow, but maybe you could dig. Uh, not that that's there so. is any similarity between any no. of her stories and Amaclads. None whatsoever. She, she often makes a cameo and you're not sure yeah. where it's going. Rapture. She was in Rapture as well, wasn't she? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I love how often we mention Rapture at the moment, despite not really remembering the details. <laughs> we don't remember it, but it exists. I just thought I should mention it because I've remembered that it exists this month. So There is, sorry, there is one thing in this that does connect us to the Valiant universe. Go on. And it is fleeting. But there is a point where the Alphan City slash Citadel, depending on who's talking. Yeah. Has a space elevator. <laughs> True. Um, which was one of Toyo Harada's Harada. big plans for his post-scarcity zone was that he was building a space elevator. Space elevator. <laughs> Maybe he built it on another planet. <laughs> Maybe he was behind the Elfins all along, even though he's dead. <laughs> or is he? Um, <laughs> or is he? He's, he's not dead. He's just in another part of the galaxy. I don't know if that was like... A knowing reference to Imperium, Toyo Harada, Harbinger, and the yeah elevator to the moon plan. Well, that's not the plan, but the the space, spa- elevator. space elevator, space tether thing that he was trying to build all the time. Or if it's, I say all the time, he mentions it a few times. I don't even think he's like first things first, <laughs> space, space elevator. elevator. Yeah, but it Taking is... Taking over a portion of this country and the entire plan is to build a lift <laughs> to the <laughs> I admire that, ma'am. <laughs> um, and we've not even mentioned the art, because the art is good. The art the, is actually... The art is good, that's true. I, I don't know if it's because the inks and the colours don't change as much, but I wasn't too jarred by the changing in pencilers i didn't even notice until i think because i often copy spoiler alert, i often copy paste the creative team if i'm doing reviews of a run um and it was only when i sort of got, luckily i double checked it against the actual issue and was like mm, okay there have been some changes then <laughs> Yes. Um, when, when you look at them back to back and obviously if you have the trade we're doing this off of pdfs at this point it's not as clear i think you see maybe that's one of the things later on you do see the characters faces more you do actually yeah earlier on there's a lot more helmets and visors and so clearly i mean that's as much a narrative thing as it is an art thing but we do get more like hey this is what this person looks like you're welcome (laughs) yeah they have a face and it does seem like there's more individualism is that a word it is individuality that's the one i don't know the anti-borg um there's more of that later on i think because certainly when you because you have these huge crowds of ironclads and it can be difficult to sort of pick out individuals, but that certainly in the later issues, I don't have any trouble picking out the regulars. Yeah, I think the first issue relies a little bit on telling you who they are, telling that you what their number is, and then stamping the number on their shoulder. <laughs> yeah, so you can make a note and yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think after that, they're like, well, we're going to show you their faces and make you give you more of a visual than just going, oh, that's that's Layla, all 328. <laughs> yeah, 328. So, yeah, I think that's a good choice to kind of shift towards more character focus visuals than yeah. n- numerical identification systems. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do think, yeah, I, I think... The art works, I think the colouring works, I think the lettering works. I think 
it is purely a more time for these characters would be good, which yeah, the the action's well drawn and well coloured, and there's some nice little action and you know the design of the ironclads as they sort of modify themselves like. Yeah, I had a drill, but what if I had a drill that was also a weapon? Yeah, I think when they start getting updated and they have, you know, chainsaw arm and giant cannon arms and stuff. There's, I think there's one point where someone acknowledges, like, to one of the Alphans, like, hey, I think I took this cannon off your arm, I'm clad. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah. Design but, be good. Yeah, and I, th- I think the construction of the world does feel recognizable but is is again yeah unique in itself i think the domes feel very kind of eden project-esque but yeah again i i can understand the choice and again I, i think we've seen like the kind of triangles making up a dome in different places and it was classic sci-fi we see the citadel surrounded by the city being a series of rings it's like if they break through the first wall and if they you know don't want to break through that second which is very classic kind of uh sci-fi and fantasy structure designing of the rings around the rings around the don't you know uh, the peasants in the first ring can die but you know they're not getting into this good one and no we're closer to the citadel i've got to go through several rings to get to us we'll be yeah. fine uh turns out not a problem you just <laughs> yeah you, you just let the guys in front of you keep shooting <laughs> through all of your problems just let the legionnaires go first let them break the walls down and then you just politely Stroll follow in, up. everyone wins yeah um i think we have covered most of what i had to say yep likewise um, I think this is a book that's kind of ticks a lot of different boxes and will appeal to different people for different reasons. I think the kind of YA, you know, kids against the ruling class narrative is solid and will appeal to people who who want that kind of book. I think there's a kind of survival narrative as they fight their way through this, you know, alien planet to try and save their friend which will appeal to someone else uh i think if you're into max you're gonna love this it's and like i said oh, yeah. the, uh warhammer kind of vibes and the starship troopers vibes i, I just think this will appeal to a lot of people and is a, a good sci-fi book i don't think it's the best sci-fi book i don't think it's no it's not groundbreaking but it does what it does well yeah and it's well put together in that sense the there could be more character work but i'm very much a character driven kind of guy so i will always yeah. think that i think you're the same, same so yeah we're probably always going to tell you you could do more character work um so yeah i mean i wouldn't say that as a massive negative i, I would just say as a some people will think you could do more character work. And yeah, we we are two of them. Yeah. And I think if this wasn't singles and it was a graphic novel, that might take care of itself. Obviously, having to do chapter breaks in any comic makes it more difficult to yeah. tell one smooth story. Um, but no, I, I like Karma Clads. And I think in f- March, when we tackled the first issue for the podcast make that sound like it was some great undertaking um yeah. it, it was not <laughs> um it, i think both of us picked it as our like top book of that month we did because as usual will and matt were wrong uh, naturally yeah um but yeah no I, I i think volume two has a lot of promise now that we've kind of set the stage for what this world is and how it's held together and that there are ancient dynasties that built super weapons and yeah that could get into some really interesting places Um, yeah i hope it doesn't take you know years to get to those places (laughs) and we get more soon um but hey 
yeah, good, good, weird yes. book. No, not that weird, just... Different. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a patchwork of ideas and the different story concepts that create what it is, which most sci-fi is, let's be honest. It's, it's true. But it's it's interesting, at the very least. It's something... Yeah. And, and Valiant have... I mean, they are rebooting their classic heroes again, but it is, it is, like you said before, really, it would be nice if they did more of this more standalone stuff and just be like, here's a book, guys. Enjoy. Maybe you'll like it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I would be happy with standalone stuff about established characters. I don't think everything needs yeah. to be completely new. I'm not saying, you know, come up with a new idea every book. But if you could, I don't know, make a user-friendly book about maybe some teenage kids with superpowers who, like, aren't the main superhero kids, but are, like, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe one of them can, like, turn into cartoon animals and... Yeah. Uh, what else would you have? Maybe one wears a cowboy hat and yeah. Maybe if there was some kind of first generation or like a zero gen, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, do you ever feel good. like you might be the only people left in the world asking for something to come of Generation Zero? <laughs> Frequently, yeah. Most of them are still alive. They only killed like three of them. There are enough Generation Zero kids for me to get Generation Zero. Look, Baxter's back. out there. We know Baxter's out there. He's Baxter still... and Animalia are definitely alive and well. We know this for sure. I'm going to call it a day there because we're just ranting about. We're just ranting about, yeah. <laughs> Generation Zero. Um, we have been Angela and Zach collectively bigger than Capes. This has been Armaclad's Volume One which I don't think it has a name yet, but the uh, revolution you... will be televised. Um, <laughs> I, I hope that is the case. If that's not the name of it, or the revolution the revolution will not be televised. The revol- it's something about revolutions and television. Um, it's up to you if you want it to be a song reference or not, I guess. Yeah. Um, I liked this. You liked this. Yeah. Um, we, we will be back like soon this. and remember that comics are bigger, bigger than, than capes. capes.